To your modern shame and Maria Maria in Rainbow Land. This is the weekly heartful report uh, from the week that starts at the 21st until the 29th of August 2018. Here with a new setup, we will have a new sort of report and it's gonna be called Seven Signs of the Week because each week we will have seven things I will go through that are significant for this week or the week we are going through. This week will be filmed from the home in Denmark close to the forest and uh, you will see some nature wonders instead of my face this time and it will take you into yourself and your core and create peace while you listen. So this week we will have first of all The general overview, the main point of the week for the report. Number one. Number two, sun. The sun is moving into an earth sign, into Virgo. What does this mean for your sign? Number three, Mercury. It is going direct. Ooh, yeah, from last week. It is sextiling Venus. Mm. And it's growing Jupiter, a beneficial a benefit planet so number four mass is direct later on this week in capricorn Ooh, still blows from uranus but in a new light four planets still retro number five venus is still at home mm, we like her but it's gonna square pluto what does this mean for the relationships number six Full moon in Pisces on the 26th of August. Number seven. Card of the week. Yay! We'll start with weekly tarot cards because Maria has been doing tarot since she got her first deck at, uh, from her father who is also a tarot card reader when she was 12. So of course you will use this now and it's right away, right away card. Yeah, that is the extra of this week, but it will be every week from now on that we will also take a tarot card for each sign. So these are the seven th- signs of the week. And now we start with number one. Are you ready? The overall view for all of us. Yay! And this week, my main theme will be Man plans, God, God laughs. And do you know what I mean by that? Well, man plans and God laughs. That means something that I have discovered so many times. We can want and desire this and that and that and this with our little human egos. And we sh- for sure we will because we have Jupiter and Scorpio. And we can shout and we can scream and we can do this and that and we can complain and be, put guilt upon this and that person, you know, and say, oh, this is also because he didn't do or she didn't do or I didn't do and we blame ourselves, we blame others, etc. But when it all comes down to it, I've said it before, then what I can see as an astrologer is that there is a plan. There is a plan. So you can scream and you can shout, but your higher self made a plan with God before you came here. And you can call it God or whatever. I don't care. I am not talking about just, you know, any kind of 3D God that wants your money. I'm talking about creator, what made us, what we are all a grand part of, which means that God is us, in a way. But um, that's a longer philosophical story. The whole point is that whatever you're struggling with now, and whatever you feel bruised and battered about coming out of the eclipse, is a part of a plan. 
And you know, if you have a strong desire with Jupiter and Scorpio, you have the Uranus and Taurus, there's something you want to manifest. You know, and with all the things that has been going on in Leo, where we are now going into another sign, of course, then, yeah, you know what I'm going to say? We have a lot of things we want to do and have fun and do things that makes us laugh and joyful and da 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 da. And that's what we've been going through during these eclipses because the last two ones were in Leo where we want to play and have a joyful life, etc. But not all of the plans are accessible right now. So surrender your desires to God. The spiritual journey of anyone on this planet is all about if you want to ascend and want to fulfill the the spiritual purpose of being on this planet and ascend to nirvana or whatever you want to call it, you know, to the next level where you don't have to reincarnate. The whole trick is to actually be able to let go of all your desires. To let go of all your desires, to give them to God, to creator, to trust, to your higher self and trust the process and notice the signs along the way. Follow the path of the highest vibration of joy. Or the highest vibration of what makes your heart sing. And now I'm not saying that, oh, but it makes me so joyful to go to the cinema and watch these kind of movies and da da da. This is not what I'm talking about. Those are the, the pleasures we can have here on a 3D plane. I'm talking about when we don't have resistance in a certain way and you need to know, learn to know yourself on a deep core level as a soul to know when it's actually your heart that sings to you. But sometimes we suffer and we feel suffering. This can be old karmic debt being paid back, so to speak. And this can create a lot of suffering, of course, because we live, relive st- stuff to let it go, to release it. But if a door isn't open and you tr- keep trying to force it open, it's not the right door if it doesn't open. I'm not saying, like, for, for example, if you have a business and you want to fight for it and it takes time and keeps you hitting shut doors. But if there's no signs of you going, uh, continuing in this direction because it doesn't give you joy. That's what I'm talking about. Or if you're with someone who doesn't want a child and you really want it. Maybe because this person is having a, an illness in the family that no, he knows or she knows that will go on to the child. And, or maybe this person already had five children. And But then, you know, hand your desire over to God if, you do, if it doesn't feel right to leave the woman, or to leave the man. You know, and whatever thing it is that you desire so badly, if you can leave any kind of desire to God, then you have liberated yourself. Because then you can actually start living your highest purpose and fulfill what you came here for. And listen and hear, because then you're you're open. When you let go of the desires you have to achieve certain things, you are open. Otherwise, you're closed off. So this is very important on this journey of finding out where we're going. Maybe you, probably you, are the only one standing in your way for yourself. Maybe your purpose is to serve other people as a light worker. And then the benefits will come as you do so. Give all your cares and worries and desires and things to God is what they always taught us. And then the world will land before your feet. Because then you are empty enough to see the beauty in the things that you already have. And you attract attract more of the beautiful things. And you will see that the things that you didn't think was beautiful or you didn't recognize or realize that you actually had in your life was actually already the gifts that you wanted. But you kept complaining because 
That is just the nature of us as human beings sometimes. Do you know, my dad used to call it the, root, the law of unsatisfaction. You know, that is what we are so good at. Limiting ourselves as human beings for that matter. Okay, so. No matter how spiritual you think you are, we are all in a process. No matter how far you think you've come, we are all in a process. I don't think that anyone got out of this eclipse without feeling bruised in some one way or the other. I hope that you see why and that you are in a good new direction for yourself in your life. After the eclipse, we all woke up to some realities. And then realities we need to learn to accept. Everything is possible in the right order. But not everything is possible in the same life. We really need to feel into what is actually the purpose and point for us in this life. We cannot get all lives gathered into one. Freedom and space and ten t- children at the same time. Being a known musician and being a very per- personal and private person. It's a retrograde phase. It's time to stand face to face to our, with ourselves. So don't focus too much upon, oh, but he also said, and she also did, and they also, da, 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 da. Put your focus and intention inwardly, still. I know that some has to be outwardly because now we have Mercury moving forward and we will have Mars doing the same thing. So a lot is going on this week. So, number two for the Taurus. The sun is moving in too. Yay, this week. Earth sign, your sister sign of Virgo, your fifth house. Way. Mm, that is perhaps the favorite move of the sun of mine. It's into the fifth house where we can enjoy our creativity. We can release, you know, our strong feelings from the bottom of our hearts. We are inspired to... Follow our heart, take chances, just take chances, be daring, you know, walk into the world with an open heart and shining eyes and a charisma and it will give you, you know, uh, some kind of like a loving atmosphere around you and uh, it's support, such a supportive thing and especially because it's moving into a grand trine, a grand earth trine, trine between Saturn up there, the realistic Saturn up here in your ninth house, planning out some traveling or some new higher education or some, you know, something that will expand your mind in a positive way, optimistic way. Even though it's called Saturn, then it's a very good thing. And at the same time, Uranus in your own sign will give you some innovative ideas about how you can be a better you and change yourself in a way that will probably make you even more attractive to the opposite sex or maybe you know the children in your life will benefit so much from it because you are glowing and you are ready to embrace everything they have to give you and you give them back and hallelujah (laughs) oh i'm sorry this is just one of my favorite uh, my favorite aspects then we have number three mercury it's going direct and it's venus sextile and there's a square to you but if and what does this mean for you? Well, okay, Mercury direct in your fourth house. That is a good thing because there's been a little bit up and down and back and forth. Fourth in this sector for you, guys. So basically what I want to say is that Mercury forward is a relief. But it's going to square with Jupiter. And it's in Jupiter is in your seventh house. And... You know, it can be some, you know, optimistic and positive things because it's Jupiter and Jupiter is positive that if something bad has been, they can be improved in being positive. You know, if something bad has been going on in your life, 
uh, in certain areas of your home life uh, where you didn't feel like things were going, moving forward in the right way, maybe you get some new ideas about how they can move forward uh, in uh, cooperation with other people. And even though there's something that itches at the same time here, yeah, hopefully it will be a good one. <laughs> If you think positively, you can improve it. Just remember to use that. It is positive even low, though it can feel a little downer you know but then again at the same time we have venus in uh, in, a, in a sextile to mercury and that is between your sixth and your fourth house so if anything is kind of nagging you relationship wise you can use a work situation and be productive and do something get something done plan organize uh, clean up something make it perfect make it shine um, so through the productivity and the work You can improve something with your family situation that will make things flow in a better way. And remember always to tune into how it is for you and your life. Because I cannot guess for every anyone watching, everyone watching, what exactly will happen. But when I say home, it's also your personal feelings. It's how you feel at the time. Being will probably be much more positive. The way you think about it also. So, because it's, it's, it's Mercury there. So something is making a turn in a new direction. And maybe some of your designers aren't really happy about it because they wanted something else. But you have to trust the universe that whatever has come your way that is now moving forward with the Mercury going forward again is a good thing for you. Something just needs to be completed uh, in a new scene, in a new light before it moves out of it on the 2nd of September where the Mercury cycle has finally ended. So it will probably do some good and hard, a uh, good cleanup. <laughs> so we also have Mars. This is number four, number four. Mars, the drive planet. Is in your ninth house. It enters retrograde on the 28th. Woo, we love that. So, you can travel, you can explore life, maybe the higher education, as I said to you before, the Saturn was scrutinizing, thinking about who, how, what can you do here in a positive way this time. So, maybe you've had some problems, as I talked about earlier on, like work wise, some frustrating conversations with people, or some clashes that made you not be able to move forward the way you wanted, or someone wasn't satisfied with your job in the right way, or was just disagreeing, or what else have we? It can be less like that from now on. It can be easier to move forward. Less criticism, less, you know, struggling in this field. So, yeah, now it's time for you to expand and explore the things in life that really makes a tickle inside your belly. Number five, your planet Venus in Libra. She loves to be here. Yeah, she really loves to be here. So, she is in your sixth house. And of course, Venus is gonna uh, be squaring Pluto this week. So this will give, be feel a little complex. So, with Pluto, it's like exploring on a deeper level, going, level going deep within into things in life, you know. Uh, but Venus in your six um, wants to work in a certain way, perhaps. Uh, Venus in your six is happy about uh, things being more in harmony and you know in Libra it's more just like the beauty of things and I'm not saying the Libra aren't deep but it's an air sign so it's kind of like just want to enjoy uh, the the routines the daily routines enjoy going into uh, the details of things uh, the beauty of things um, but with Pluto up there in the ninth wants to go very deep into things on a very deep level and this may not always be so pretty but it's so maybe you will have some discussions with people conversations um, that aren't just going the way that you want them to go but don't worry it's all for the good so just trust the process if something feels off for you and your planet is in its other home sign Venus rules your sign and the Libran. So it feels at home here. It's another uh, 
nice place for Venus to be. So no matter who is going to try to put you into a situation where you feel it's a little too deep or steep, then just feel the benefit of her being at home and feeling safe at the same time. A lot is still going on for all of us in our lives and we all need to adjust and to these new situations that we are in after a pretty hardcore uh, eclipse phase where we still have four retrogrades which means that we still need some time looking inwardly so even though the venus pluto square is telling us to learn to be better in our relationships to learn to act differently with other people, act more trustful, even though they want something else than us, act less stubborn, act more open to new ideas, etc., then we are still inward, in an inward thinking, inward feeling phase with still more, still four more planets moving retro as this week ends. But two more is going forward, and that's an awesome thing. Thank you so much, Taurus, for watching. And remember, the most important thing, besides from, of course, uh, subscribing to the channel <laughs> and giving me positive or constructive criticism, uh, which is always welcome, very welcome. Number seven for the Taurus. We shouldn't forget number seven. It's the card of the day, uh, the card of the week, actually. And that is the Knight of Cups. Yay! And why am I yaying on this one? It's because it has something to do, of course, with the sun moving into your fifth house where you can shine like a knight and, you know, be this glamorous figure that the women will love or the men will love because they need your earthy beauty. And, you know, you just have this thing where you just want to, if you are, have a partner, which is a Taurus, hug and kiss and... And you know, and you will come there, look at the card. Yeah, you will come there looking beautiful and you know, triumphant and finally show yourself in a way where people will send you love because you have such a great charisma. And like that, you will inspire people to not follow trends, but to follow their hearts because that is the fifth house stuff as well. So. Thanks for watching. See you next week, Taurus. Summer, summer, summer time. Summer time. Summer time. Summer time.